Our quote for today is, I try to avoid things that make me fat, like scales, mirrors, and photographs. I think many of you subscribe to the Magnificat, which is the monthly periodical that comes out, which has all their daily readings as well as excellent commentaries. And it'll often have um, a little one page about Saint Who, describing some of the more obscure saints. And this one really caught my eye the other day because her feast day is coming up on just in a few days on June 20th. Her name is Blessed Margaret Ball, B-A-L-L, like basketball. Blessed Margaret was one of the 17 Irish martyrs, the only woman in the 17 martyrs that were beatified by St. John Paul II in 1992. She's a remarkable woman, born in County Meath in Ireland in the year 1515, the daughter of a very wealthy landowner. She married at the age of 16, had 10 children, five of whom survived to adulthood. And in 1553, she married her husband Bartholomew, who would become the Lord Mayor of Dublin. So she was a very wealthy and well-known and prestigious woman. And she saw, she was a devout Catholic, and she saw many attacks on the Catholic Church by the government because in 1537, the Irish Parliament proclaimed Henry VIII as head of the church in Ireland. As you know, Henry VIII broke away from the Pope in, in England, and then because Ireland was underneath England at that time, it was also declared that he would be the head of the church in, in Ireland as well. And by this time, Margaret's husband had become the mayor and the Protestant Reformation or the Protestant Revolt began to impact Ireland. And now it was under Elizabeth I, who was a very uh, anti-Catholic persecutor of the church. And, and yet Margaret, who was you know, a widow now and a, a wife, well, a mother, she maintained her Catholic household. One of the things she would do would be to shelter priests who were being hunted down, Catholic priests and bishops were being hunted down. She would give them safe refuge in her house and they would say mass for her and her family and give them communion, baptize children. Margaret also would teach catechism and the Catholic faith to the poor children in her neighborhood. So she had a wonderful apostolate as a, at this time, a widow and a mother and but one of the things that occurred in her life was that her son, Walter, left the Catholic Church and became a Protestant and became the commissioner for ecclesiastical causes for the Protestant Church. His mother, Margaret, continued to pray for him and try to you know, pray for his conversion back to the Catholic faith, but he had become, he knew that in order to advance in the government, to have a political career, he would have to become Protestant, so he maintained his his Protestant views, and pretty soon would continue to uh, persecute Catholics himself. His mother never gave up on him. She continued to pray for him, even invited him to have dinner with her and one of the priests that she was sheltering. Walter instead had her arrested, uh, taken through the streets on a wooden pallet publicly, and then imprisoned in the Dublin Castle. So he imprisoned his own mother. He also imprisoned the priest that was being sheltered there, who was sort of the family chaplain. And she could have left the dungeon if she declared the oath of fidelity, declaring that the Pope in Rome was not the true Pope, and that Queen Elizabeth was the head of the church in England and Ireland. But she refused to do that. So here she was for three years in a very cold, damp prison, suffering from arthritis. No natural light would come in. One of her other sons would bring her some food and, and candles to have some light to keep a little bit warm by. And she died in prison, really of exposure, at the age of 69. She was beatified by St. John Paul II in 1992 and declared a blessed. So we certainly know that she will be canonized one day. 
If you go to Dublin today, you'll see in front of the St. Mary's Pro Cathedral, a statue of Blessed Margaret Ball with her grandson-in-law, who is also blessed, Blessed Francis Taylor, her grandson-in-law. And Margaret Ball is buried in St. Aidan's Church in Dublin. So her feast day is June 20th. So, but it, so I was so impressed by her life because I've always been fascinated by that aspect of church history with Henry VIII breaking away from the Catholic Church and then Queen Elizabeth persecuting the Catholic Church and the rightful Queen of England, Queen Mary, who was imprisoned and ultimately beheaded for her Catholic faith. It's a fascinating era of history and we oftentimes forget about these real wives and mothers and grandmothers who sheltered priests in their homes, who herself was is considered a martyr for the faith, dying in the dungeon of Dublin Castle. So we pray for her canonization and the powerful witness of a mother uh, praying for her son who had left the faith, even when her son persecuted her, she did not disown him, but continued to pray for him up until the day of her death. So we pray today, Saint Blessed Margaret Ball of Dublin, pray for us.